There are some things it's okay to be indifferent about. But when it comes to how we're saved, how we're right with God, who Jesus is in terms of his natures and their union in the one person, the triune nature of God, the virgin birth of Christ, the substitutionary punishment bearing death of Christ on the cross, the inspiration and authority of scripture, it is a sin against God to be indifferent about those things. And that's what we've seen for 150 years now. People are indifferent about the most important things there are. That'd be like me watching a football game in my living room and noticing that the other half of my house is on fire and thinking, oh, that stinks. Who's kicking off next? In a book written in 1966, 1966, theologian R.B. Kuyper wrote a book called The Glorious Body of Christ. The Glorious Body of Christ. And the introduction to the book he titled, Has the Glory Departed? From, kind of from our story, remember what Phineas' wife named the child that was born when the ark was stolen? Ichabod, the glory has departed. And Kuiper in 1966 asked, has the glory departed? And he says, well, the church has got all kinds of issues and problems, but it's still the glorious body of Christ. But there are these great dangers that it's facing. And he lists three of them. I'm just going to, doctrinal indifference is one of them. But he says the biggest, the biggest dangers to the church in 1966, worldliness, dispensationalism, and doctrinal indifference, he said. And Kuiper said this. Listen to this stirring paragraph about indifference, doctrinal indifference. He said, there are those within the church who deny the most cardinal doctrines of the Christian religion, deniers of the Bible as the infallible word of God, and consequently of the scriptural teachings of the Holy Trinity, the deity of Christ, the vicarious atonement, are found in the church's pulpits and seminary chairs. Denials of those things. That, of course, is deplorable beyond words, but an even sadder fact must be recorded. It is that in most instances... The church is not concerned to cast those false teachers out. If the church had a zeal for the truth, it would rid itself of them. But of that, most churches have no thought. Church members, by and large, don't know what the truth is, nor do they care to know. The churches are filled with Pontius Pilots who ask sneeringly, what is truth? And what they really mean is this. You tell me, he's writing this in 1966. Do you still see this attitude today? He says, here's what people really mean. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody can know. Let's quit quibbling about truth. Has anything changed since 1966? That's the end of the Kuiper quote. Contrast that with what Jesus taught about truth, about doctrine. This is a major Philistine god killing the church today. People are indifferent about theology, about doctrine. Jesus said in John 8, 31, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. To be indifferent about doctrine is to be indifferent about God altogether and indifferent about your own salvation, your own eternity. I've heard people say over the years things like, okay, so some people, some people like a little bit of works with their grace when it comes to salvation. And if, we're being, if we were being persecuted, we probably wouldn't be trying to split little fine hairs of theology like that. Paul, writing by the Holy Spirit, said in Galatians 3.10, as many as are of the works of the law, anyone trusting in what they're doing to get them into heaven, they're under the curse. That's the divine position. That's what scripture says. Our indifference to truth does not make truth any less important, folks. Even if you can get huge denominations to think it doesn't really matter, it still does. It still matters whether anyone believes it or not. One plus one is still two, even if the whole world thinks it's three. Paul was not indifferent about trusting in works versus trusting in the finished work of Christ. He was passionate. He was passionate about it. Paul and the Christian people through the centuries who really believed the gospel and know Christ as their savior, they were willing to fight for that truth and even die for it if need be. You know, we often speak kind of nebulously about a willingness to die for Christ. What that really means is a willingness to die for theology, a willingness to die for the true gospel. By definition, a Christian 
believes the doctrines of the Bible. That's what defines us as human beings, as children of God. So how can doctrinal indifference really be a thing in the church? Here, here's the, the answer. Because what professes to be the church really isn't the church at all. A lot of it. The only doctrinally indifferent people there are in the world are simply called unbelievers, folks. Remember R.C. Sproul listening to a lecture he did on liberalism. It was called The Dangers of Liberalism. He said, folks, before we get into this, allow me to summarize liberalism for you. And he walked over to his chalkboard and wrote in large capital letters, unbelief, and underlined it. That's what it is. One day, no matter how much doctrinal indifference there is in the professing church, listen to me, folks, that Philistine deity will be shattered. And if he doesn't do it through us, he'll raise up another generation that will care about the truth and will stand for it and preach it, just as God says it in Scripture.